and welcome or welcome back to the Emily Knits channel. Today I have a bit of a different video for you. I thought there's a dog just down here that was a yawn if you heard that. <laughs> there he is. Uh, I thought today we would talk about some of my least worn finished objects in knitting and why they are not so worn. Uh, I thought if it was interesting as well I could follow this up in a little bit of time with my most worn knitting projects which obviously is interesting for another reason. I think this might be my fifth year in knitting um, and I am a fairly prolific knitter. I'm certainly prolific in the number of whips that I've got, but I've got a fair few finished objects as well. Uh, and the way that I have learned a lot through my knitting journey, um, I learned a little bit from my nana when I was very young, but I didn't really keep it up. And then the way that I've learned once I've actually properly started knitting is basically by throwing myself in at the deep end and finding a pattern that I want to knit and just going for it. And what that has led to is a few things where um, errors have been made, mistakes have been made that maybe maybe could have been avoided uh, and I've learned from them as I have gone through my knitting journey and I thought it would be interesting to share them here. A couple of quick things to mention before we get into the video proper. There are two items here that uh, they're not here, <laughs> two items here that aren't here. There are two items that I don't have anymore that I'm going to talk about. They've been gifted to my mum, who I think actually is getting quite a lot of wear out of them. So they work for some people, just not for me. Um, and so, yeah, other than that, so we've got a total of six things that I'm going to talk about. The two that aren't here, four there as well. And then one sort of special, this one at the bottom. Um, I've sort of given it an honourable mention because it's a bit different to the rest. I am... It, <laughs> It was something that the moment I saw this designer talk about this, I wanted to knit it. It is beautiful. I am so happy with it. I finished it. I was really pleased. I put it on and I noticed a glaring problem with it, which is me. It's nothing to do with the pattern. And honestly, I'm heartbroken about it. So I'm kind of hoping somebody might have a suggestion for how to fix it. Um, but we'll come to that. And that's the sort of, I suppose, dishonourable mention at the end because, oh, I was so gutted. I could have cried. Um, and just a very quick, quick disclaimer before we get properly into it. None of this that I'm going to say today is a reflection on the patterns or the designers at all. Most of these patterns that I'm going to talk about haven't worked because of something that I've done, not because of something that is in the pattern or things that I've learned that I like about my knitted items that, that I've learned from, from this, the way that I like things to fit. Uh, I think there is one that is to do with the pattern. And there's only one that I wouldn't knit again for the same reason, but it's because something about the pattern doesn't suit me rather than there's a problem with the pattern. Uh, I think all of the designers, yeah, I think all of the designers, I either would knit the things again or actually most of them. I've got other things from these designers that I've either knit again or I have in my queue to knit again, um, to knit again. that I would either knit or I've got in my queue to knit. So there's, you know, it's absolutely no reflection on the designer. None of this is any problems with the pattern and all of this is personal as well. So if any of these patterns are your favourites and they work really well for you, great. Honestly, I'm really happy for you because there's a lot of work has gone into these that I don't wear. So, uh, yeah, with that, with all that said, let's get into it. So first off, I'll talk about the two that I don't have with me and I'll put pictures and things up here because I do have some pictures. So the first one that we'll start with is the only one that is to do with the pattern, not me, but it is to do with how the pattern fits on me. So the first one that I don't wear, and it's one of the ones that's been gifted to my mom, is The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. Uh, so I knit this probably about a year ago. And I knit it out of Stylecraft Grace, which is an acrylic mohair and wool blend yarn. Uh, it's got quite a halo on it. It's actually, I really liked the yarn. One of the things I liked about it is that it's fairly easy to just throw it in the washing machine. I knit it in this green colour, which I think is called Forest. Now, the problem with this one is nothing to do with the, the, the size that I knit. The size was really good. I think I maybe knit a size down from recommended because I wanted a bit less positive ease. And the things that I liked about this pattern, I love the colour that I chose. I think it's a very sort of utilitarian looking pattern. And I think in that sort of almost khaki green colour, which is a colour that suits me quite well anyway, it makes it look even more utilitarian. And I loved it. It was a really quick knit. I think I did it in a couple of weeks. It was really enjoyable. The only reason I didn't wear this, I wore it a couple of times and this, it bugged me every single time I wore it. I didn't like the neckline. So the way that you do it is you knit, it's knit bottom up. You knit all the way up and then essentially at the top, I can't remember if you do it longer at the back than the front to, to sort of form some sort of short rows, but you knit your front, you knit back and then you seam them together at the seams, but there's no shaping really around the neckline. It's essentially a slash neck 
and this just sat here on me and it looked good it looked good but i found myself constantly wearing it and tugging it down it felt like something was constricting me it wasn't tight but sensory wise i didn't like that against my neck at all um and it maybe didn't it did suit me but it didn't suit me as well as, as some other necklines so this was the pattern where i learned that i don't like is it boat neck slash necks whichever you want to call it um the pattern itself lovely really well written and I think, the, I suppose, if I liked it enough, I could work out how to put some shape in it. I didn't like it that much, <laughs> so that's maybe telling. What I wanted this to be was just a throw-on um, with jeans. It's quite thin because of the weight of yarn that I used. I think, technically, Starcraft Grace is an iron weight, but it's a very thin iron weight. Um, I would probably call it more a DK. I would knit this to a DK weight pattern and it'd be fine, which meant that for this pattern... The, it gave quite an airy gauge, which I quite liked. It was just a light throw on piece and it's just at that neckline. So that's why this one is not in the most worn. It has been gifted to my mum. Fits her really nicely and she doesn't mind the neckline at all. So she's wearing it quite a lot. So that's the first one. Uh, the next one to talk about, I will also talk about this, the next one that I don't have with me. And this is the Dartmoor Sweater V-neck by Kadri. So one thing to note about Kadri is I've heard a couple of things recently about her not being size inclusive. And having had a look at her patterns, I think some of them aren't. Some of her older ones, I don't think, are. They only go up to maybe like a 51, 52 inch finish bust, which would only just be big enough for me. Wouldn't give me much positive ease. But her recent patterns certainly are fully up to like, I think, a 64 inch bust. So they're, they're very, and some of them are further. They are a full size range. Uh, I've knit, this was a test knit for Kadri, uh, for Sabina, who is Kadri. And I've knit one of her patterns myself as well, purchased myself. Um, and yeah, so so just proceed with caution a little bit, I guess. Just check the size range before you buy the pattern. Don't assume that they're all going to be size inclusive. I sort of, I, I sampled, I didn't sample. I went and looked at four or five of her patterns and I only found one that wasn't. Uh, but I didn't go through all of them. She has a massive back, back catalogue. So it's worth just checking before you do that, that, that it is size inclusive and that you can get your size in it. Um, so I test knit this for Sabina, for Kadri, uh, and I had already knit one of her patterns. So I knit the Dartmoor normal, non-V-neck, uh, fully influenced by Laura Penrose, who test knit that, and, and her version was beautiful. And I knit this, I knit the standard one in Christmas of 2022, going into 2023. That is one of my most worn sweaters. I adore that. Um, but what happened was I ended up knitting a size down from the recommended size. So Sabina, uh, so the K patterns from Kadri recommend quite a lot of positive ease. Um, and I think the recommended amount is about 10 inches of positive ease. So I knit, when I knit my Dartmoor, I knit a size down because I was a little bit worried about the amount of yarn I had. Uh, that still gave me four inches of positive ease. And that is a fantastic fit for me. I really, really like the way that that fits. Um, and I was doing a bit of a, at the time when I was knitting these, I was trying to get to grips with this kind of amount of ease that I like. And do I like that much ease? Because I've never really knit anything with that much ease before. Um, so when I applied for the test knit for the V-neck version, which I did as soon as I saw it, because I love the, the normal version so much, I applied to knit the recommended size for my bust, which gave me 10 inches of positive ease. The ease in and of itself isn't a problem, although I'm not mad keen on it. <laughs> But the, the, the problem is the combination of things. So I knit this in some yarn that I had in stash and I knit this in Drops Alaska held with a strand of Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. Both really nice yarns. I'd rate both of them. They go really nice together. They're both in the colour Sage Green if you want to look at the same colours. The problem is that that made the sweater really heavy. It is one of the thickest, densest, heaviest things I've ever made. It was hard to work on when I got to the end because it was so heavy going round and round. And I could feel the difference between that and the dark, the original Dartmoor because I knit that in different yarn. Uh, and what happened then with the, with the amount of ease and then the weight of it, not only did it become a massively heavy thing that I didn't really, you know, it wasn't super comfortable to wear either. It was just not flattering on me. It was, it looked like I was... The, the V was a bit low on me. The sleeves were a bit long on me. Uh, if you've watched any of my podcasts, you'll have heard me mention before that I'm six foot tall. Things are usually short on me. The sleeves were long on me. I got gauge. I got gauge and it was long before I'd even blocked it. It didn't grow within blocking. I mean, it did grow within blocking, but that wasn't where this came from. Uh, but it was just so heavy and I just didn't feel like it was flattering. I felt like I was wearing my dad's jumper. 
and it didn't look good on me. Uh, so that's been gifted to my mum. My mum is smaller than me, so it probably has probably 15, 20 inches of positive ease on her. But she loves a cosy jumper on an evening when they're in the camper van. So she's using it for that. And it is, again, it's getting some love. But it is it was so heavy. That was just poor. I, I learned from that one that I um I didn't I don't like that much positive ease. Uh and I learned that yarn choice is important <laughs> yarn weight is important how 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 heavy this is going to make your garment is important so that was a big learning curve for me one thing i was going to mention i completely forget I forgot to mention on the on the weekender which was the first one is i was going to talk about would i knit these patterns again the weekender no i wouldn't because i don't like that neckline um but purely because of that not because of anything else the dark v neck yes i would but i wouldn't knit it in that yarn and i would knit a size down so i think for my size i was recommended the 2xl to give me the right amount of positive ease and i think that's what i knit for the v-neck i would go back and knit the xl which is what i knit for the standard size standard neck sorry the, the straight neck v-neck straight neck dark mob. and i would knit that and that gave me about four inches of positive ease and i really rate that so yeah that's the dark mob v-neck Moving on to the next one, we're getting into the ones that I have here. So let me get this down and you'll notice something with some of my knits, particularly the ones that haven't worked. I get to the end, I try it on. When I realise I'm not super happy with it, I don't weave my ends in. So there's a couple of them that don't have their ends woven in. Uh, so this one is the Ghost Whisperer by Park Williams. So let me pop it on and I'll show you. So this is a bottom up pattern, like a little, excuse the ends, because like I said, I haven't woven them in, uh, a bottom up t-shirt, essentially, a little sort of loose knit t-shirt knit in a single strand of mohair. Uh, and it's a lovely pattern. I, this mohair, I had intentionally gone searching for something that was sort of, uh, that used a single strand of mohair because I'd inherited some yarns from my nana. She passed away when I was much younger. I mentioned briefly at the beginning, she taught me to knit originally when I was much younger. I was never really interested in it when I was younger. And unfortunately, she passed away when I was about 12, 13. Probably even slightly younger than that, actually. And now as an adult, I've got back into knitting. And I really wish I could share that with her because she would have she would have loved that I'd shown an interest in it. And it would have been really nice to be able to pick her brains on it. Um, when my granddad passed, my mum took a lot of stuff from the house and a, a lot of what she did take was some uh, wool and yarns and things that my nana had had and she kept them for ages thinking she was going to do something with them my mum does knit she doesn't knit very much um she has knit a few things she's knit a teddy bear i think and things like that but she's not a, she wouldn't consider herself an advanced knitter and i would you know she she the knitting that she used to do i had quite a lot of knitted garments from her but she had a knitting machine one of those big flatbed knitting machines um so she kept the yarn thinking that she would do something with it eventually, but she never did. And then when I really got into knitting, she passed it on to me. And this was one of the things that was in there. This was just this single ball of mohair. It didn't have any ball band or anything on it. But I know my nana well enough to know that she will have paid a fair amount of money for this. Or this will have been something special to her. She didn't spend a lot of money on her hobbies. They were very frugal people. Uh, and mohair is not cheap. And she would have seen mohair as a luxury. And she would have. this would have been a bit of a splurge for her. So I really wanted to make something that was special from that and that really highlighted the mohair and I didn't want it to be lost. Um, so that's part of the reason this didn't work because I had a limited amount of yarn <laughs> that I was trying to work with. Um, and it's knit bottom up. There's a couple of things that I did wrong with this. So first off, I got my three needle bind off the wrong way around. It was the first time I'd ever done a three needle bind off and I don't know if you can see that seam is on the outside, which is not a good start. Um, but that's you know, it's much of a muchness. You won't, you don't see it when I wear it. So I wasn't bothered enough to go back and change it. My pickup on the sleeves isn't great, but again, it's single stranded mohair. It was hard. If I was to knit this pattern again, which I would, I would do the sleeves differently. I don't dislike the sleeves, um, but I think I prefer a slightly more floaty sleeve. So I would probably do the sleeves exactly the same, but just not do the decreases at the end and not do the I-cord bind off. I'd just do maybe some more increases actually and just bind off like normal rather than these sort of puff sleeves. I just don't think they suit my shape as well. But the main issue I've got is the length of it. And I'm going to need to sort of try and kneel up and show you this. And this is because it's bottom up. If I come back a bit. Yeah, you can see there. So this is my waist. This is where my jeans are sitting. My belly button is here for reference. This is really short. <laughs> this is really short. It does roll a little bit because it's a, a raw edge at the bottom. 
um, but it's just, it's really short and it's too short really for me to comfortably wear it. So yeah, it sits just above my waist. My waist is here, so it sits above my waist and it's just too short. So this was my lesson that I learned about. Don't just knit to pattern on bottom up patterns. Try them on, <laughs> try them on, see how they fit, see where they're gonna go. I have contemplated, I do have a little bit of this mohair left and I have contemplated going back in and picking up at the bottom and seeing if I can add some ribbon uh, because that might make it more wearable. So I think at some point I will get around to doing that because I would like to be able to wear this. The colour is nice with a little black vest underneath. This looks lovely. It's nice enough to be able to wear at work. Um, and yeah, it sort of highlights the, the, the mohair that was something special. So would I knit it again? Yeah, absolutely. I'd knit it longer in the body. Uh, and I would probably change the sleeves, but that's just personal preference. I would still wear this as it is with the sleeves as is. It's just the, the length of the body that causes an issue for me. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is this gorgeous one here. This was probably only about the second sweater I ever knit. This was um, very early on in my knitting journey. Uh, and this is the Malvina sweater by Veron Rose, I think. Uh, this was her first design. You can see again, ends. This was her first design. She has since gone on to, to be quite a prolific designer, actually, and she's got some really stunning designs. The Her stuff is a mix for me. Some stuff, all of her stuff is beautiful. All of her stuff is beautiful. Some of it, I think, is quite high fashion and just isn't stuff that I would wear. It's more like maybe, it reminds me of Augustine's, if, you've, if you're familiar with their patterns, really fashion forward, beautiful things, but almost more like works of art rather than wearable pieces, for me, personal preference. And then she has some that I think are, gorgeous and, and there's, there's a cardigan she's got that i'm it's on my li list to knit i have it in my in my library i just need some time to knit it so this is you can maybe see see the problem with this actually already uh this is a top down sweater top down raglan sweater with these cable details down the raglan and then these beautiful balloon lace sleeves with all this detail on them really really beautiful and at the bottom it's just stocking it all down the body and ribbon at the bottom uh this is a lesson in blocking your swatch so this is knit in the recommended yarn which is drops al no drops nepal i think it's the i think it's what whichever one is the aaron white version <clears throat> that they do that is a wool alpaca blend and i was so keen to get started on this uh, this is the colour Rust Mix, by the way, which is absolutely beautiful. You can sort of see the nuance in it. It's got yellows in it. It's got reds in it. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. The alpaca makes it nice and drapey and very, very soft. It's a lovely sweater. Um, I was so keen to get going on this that I just cast on and I used essentially my, once I'd got a portion of stockinette in it, I used that as my swatch. I was quite inexperienced at knitting sweaters at this point and I didn't block that because because I was too excited to be getting going and I finished it and I tried it on and it fit like a dream it was beautiful and then I washed and blocked it and you'll be able to see just from the neckline <laughs> so this is where I prefer my neckline to sit uh, and this is yeah it's it's very low on me it's it, it just sort of went down yeah, so this is going to be more difficult to show you can sort of see there it's just all sort of draped a bit much i've got way more positive ease than i was supposed to have the sleeves are a bit too long so you lose some of the definition in that and they're a bit too big they are big they're supposed to be big but this is a bit bigger than they're supposed to be and you lose the definition in the lace because of that uh, and it went from being super flattering to being actually really quite un unflattering <laughs> Um, and this is this is entirely my fault. If I had blocked my swatch, I would have seen that something with alpaca in it will grow. And I would probably have gone down at least one needle size. Uh, and I would have had a much better fitting. It doesn't look that bad actually here, but it's that, that neckline is particularly is, is, the, is the problem. It almost sort of falls off my shoulders when I wear it. It's it's not how it's supposed to look. And this this all of a sudden looks really unflattering on me. This has been worn. You can tell it's been worn because of all the pilling. And that's the other thing to note about alpaca yarns that I wasn't aware of at the time. They pill. Uh, so would I knit this again? Yes. I'd maybe actually even use a completely different yarn because I don't know if you can see 
you can't see it very well but it's pilling on the lace as well of course because that's what yarn tends to do it pills everywhere but it means you lose some of the definition on this beautiful lace so i think i'd maybe be tempted to to knit it in a different yarn completely and i would wash and block my swatch <laughs> wash and block your swatch oh it's such a shame because it's such a good color on me but i'd use the yarn again 100 percent. maybe not for say maybe not for something with lace details in you can see there it's, it's losing some of the definition because of the pilling uh, and it's not been worn that much but yeah let this be a lesson in washing and blocking your swatches the next one is linked to that actually this is another lesson in swatching uh now no it's not i swatched for this and i think my gauge changed during the pattern knitting the pattern um, so I, this is the Sundial Sweater by Iris Hardage, who is Iris Makes. You've heard me mention her before. I think she's a fantastic designer. One of her patterns, uh, one of her other projects that I've tested it for her is in my most warm. I reach for that all the time. Uh, I have some, I have quite a lot of her other patterns in my To Be Knit queue. One of them I featured the other week on my uh top summer patterns that i own that i want to knit um and this is this is still an, an absolutely beautiful pattern so i test this knit, te test knit this for iris this was my first test knit for her uh and it was one of my one of my early test knits certainly so this is an all over i, I guess textured sweater it's mostly stockinette knit in a strand of fingering with mohair and it's got these lovely details all the way down that are your sundial effect basically she also has a sundial tee, uh, which is gorgeous. So a summer version. Uh, and I think she's got kids as well. Again, it has slight balloon sleeves uh, and this gorgeous detail that goes all the way across. I knit this in a strand of woolly knit British wool held with a strand of drops mohair in the shade Curry. And this is beautiful colour. Beautiful, beautiful colour. Absolutely gorgeous. This is another one I was gutted about when I finished it. So I knit it to pattern. I added a bit of length. I didn't try it on when I was working on it because it was too much. It felt like too much of a ball ache, basically, to put it on needles because I didn't have try it on cords. Uh, and I did swatch and I blocked my swatch. I'd learnt my lesson. And when I finished it and I tried it on, it's too small. And if I check my gauge now, it's different to the gauge that I got on the swatch. Uh, the other thing weirdly with this one i've used this yarn before and it's been fine but this one is, is a bit itchy on me i don't know what it is um let me put this on and i'll show you this is quite uncomfortable i just want to try on this is it shouldn't be that tight on my neck uh, and it's a shame that it's that tight on my neck because it's beautiful this is why this one hasn't been frogged or given away because i really want this to work <laughs> it's so beautiful um, if I again kneel up and show you, it's quite short as well, and I have tried to aggressively block this. Uh, there you can see it's pulled my t shirt up. So, again, hips, sorry, waist, top of my jeans, belly button. Uh, I kept this thinking I'd wear it with a black skirt for work, um, but it's just so around the neck, it's so constricting. Oh, the more I look at this, the more I really want to keep this. <laughs> So the problem is because the neck's so constricting, it um, it's a bit irritating around the top. And I think, again, it's because it's too small on me. So I'm, I'm half tempted to try giving it another block and see if I can pull it out aggressively. Because I really love how this sundial stretches out. It does look really, really nice. The sleeves are a nice length. They're probably bracelet length. Um, there. Everything is really nice about it, except... I could wear that with some high-waisted jeans. Um, it just needs, maybe I just need to give it an aggressive block down because that would make all the difference it not sitting next to my neck like that. So this one might be salvageable. Uh, and I really hope it is because this is such a stunning pattern. I feel like it's quite flattering because it's sort of, the lines pull your eye vertically down and it would be a really nice thing to wear in winter. But I've, I've not actually worn this at all because it just feels uncomfortable every time I do. So if I can get it to block further down, yeah, this will be staying. So this is the Sundial by Iris Makes. Look at that. The colour is so good with my hair as well. Like, I was so disappointed in this when I finished it. 
No, no, I wasn't. I was disappointed in myself when I finished this. Okay, so the lesson we learnt from that one, try things on. Just try it on, Emily. Just try it on. It's not that hard. Would I make this again? Yes, in a heartbeat. It was really fun to knit. Uh, it's a beautiful pattern. I think the summer version is really nice as well, but I prefer the winter version for this. I just think it looks really nice. And I'm really, really happy with the, the yarn colour and the yarns that I chose. I just need to, I need to be quite aggressive with the block and see if I can get this to sit a bit wider. I'll report back on that one. Next, and the last one we're going to talk about before the, ooh, the soul destroying one. This is, let me get this opened up in the right way. So this, oops, sorry about that. This is my Whitmore sweater by Amy Loudon, who is the ta Tayloress Studios, I think, is what she goes by in Ravelry. And this is a beautiful lace work sweater, or lace yoke sweater, uh, with these gorgeous, it's, it's got the same lace on the back. And then again, almost sort of balloon bishop sleeves and a a stock in her body it's a bit creased um again really pleased with the yarn i chose chose really pleased with the yarn i chose i used again a strand of wool in it fingering weight there's a theme here i really like wool in it british wool cones uh, in the shade autumn glow which is a much lighter color i wonder if i can show you any if you see these lighter speckles that's the autumn glow uh, and then the mo the mohair that I held with it was some that I got from a D stash on Etsy, no eBay. Uh, it was just in big cakes. There was again no no information of the dye or anything, dye of the yarn producer or anything. And I would say it's probably uh, it's not a massively high silk content because it's not a very soft mohair, and it also doesn't give it a massive halo. You can sort of see, but it's a beautiful burgundy colour. Um, and brings this sort of mild effect to it which is really beautiful uh, and this colour again really suits me so let me pop it on for you this is also the second time I've knit this pattern well, I didn't finish it the first time um I so I'd knit the entire body of this once I'd knit the the all the lace all the body and I was trying to convince myself I had some acrylic that I was knitting it in and there was not a problem with knitting it in acrylic. It, it showed the showed the lace really nicely. I'll see if I can put a picture up actually because I think sometimes there's a bit of, there can be a bit of snobbery. Uh, not pointing any fingers at anybody. I have been guilty of this before where you go, oh, I can't use acrylic for that. Acrylic's no good for that kind of pattern. And actually it worked fine. Uh, the reason I did it was because I was, again, I was new on in my knitting journey. Oh, it's DK weight yarn. That'll work. <laughs> and it did. Um, the only issue with it was the colour. I'd got that yarn. I'm sure it was like Hayfield bonus DK. Uh, and there was a little knitting shop near me that was going out of business. And she was selling packs of 10 balls for £10. Uh, being from Yorkshire, I can't resist a bargain. So I went for that. Uh, and it was I should have known, really, because it was called Punchy Pink was the colourway name, I think, or something like that. And on the pictures, it looked more like a coral in person it's more like a salmon pink and it just i was knitting all the way through the body going it'll be all right it'll be all right it might be out of my comfort zone but it'll be all right i tried it on i didn't like the color i finished the body and tried it on i didn't like the color and then both my other half and my mum separately to each other without any you know they, they, they weren't in the same room they were completely separate my, my mum was over at her house and i texted her uh, my other half was obviously here when oh it's lovely but that color's a bit it doesn't really suit you Okay, so at that point, I just, I gave up on it, basically. And I don't think I even frogged it back. I just got rid of the yarn. Um, but I knew I wanted to knit this again because the, the the lace had been really fun. The out, the, the, the thing was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and I did, and I still, I do wear this quite a bit. It gets so much less wear than a lot of my other patterns, but I do still wear this a fair amount. So the, the problem with this is, again, it is to do with the pattern, actually, but it's me not learning from other people's notes on Ravelry projects. So once I'd started it, I was looking through Ravelry, looking for some information. I noticed that quite a lot of the projects mentioned that there are no short rows and they put short rows in. And at that point, I went, that'd be all right. I don't want to rip back. I'm not going to bother. Uh, and it bothers me. <laughs> it bothers me. So the, I don't know if you can tell. You sort of can. Yeah, the, the back is exactly the same height as the front. 
and I find myself again constantly throughout the day adjusting it and adjusting it. So if I was to do this again, uh, a few people have done some really good projects where they talk about putting short rows in it. And I realise short rows aren't for everybody. I know there's at least a couple of other designers that, or YouTubers, influencers that I watch who have mentioned that they find that short rows make it fit worse on them. So they don't like putting short rows in. For me, this was where I learned that actually I really do prefer short rows. Because um, it feels, the back of my neck feels really bare. And that's why I find myself sort of adjusting it all day. And yeah, and for me, or how it fits on me, I think that makes it look a bit more handmade. Whereas, um, because you, you wouldn't necessarily get a store-bought sweater that fits like that on me. Again, on me, all of this is caveated on me. So this was the one where I learnt to put just put short rows in. Pick patterns that have short rows, or if they don't have short rows, put them in. It's not that hard. This was the pattern where I learned I, I like short rows. I like a higher back neck than front neck. Uh, if I was, would I knit it again? Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd put some short rows in and I'd probably give it a split hem because I think that just might work a little bit better with this pattern, but that is, that's purely aesthetic. It fits perfectly well with, as it is. Um, and yeah, I am again, sort of gutted because that lace is beautiful. I got the le length right, the sleeve lengths are right. Everything is good, just the neck. And I do wear it, but I constantly find myself adjusting it. I've even been doing it whilst I'm, I've been conscious of it whilst just sat here that I can feel space on the back of my neck where I wouldn't expect to be able to feel space okay so that's all of the main ones there's one more I wanted to talk about oh it's so beautiful just look at it it's so beautiful so this this oh it's so beautiful I'm just admiring it I'm just admiring it in the viewfinder uh, so this is the Opula Yoke by Marina Skewer. The moment I saw Marina posting about this, I wanted to knit it. It is just, look at those details, it's gorgeous. And then you have a little bit of colour work on the sleeves and that's on the hem as well. The hem is rolling because I haven't blocked it because I tried it on as soon as I, I tried it on as soon as I finished it and noticed I something had gone wrong. Um, I've got to find it because when it's not on, it's not very visible. I'm going to put this on. We're going to cry together and hopefully somebody's going to have a suggestion because I don't know how to fix this. Um, so I haven't made a mistake in the colour work. The colour work is beautiful. The fit is a little bit small, but I think with blocking, I could probably get that, you know, I could sort that out. I haven't, like I said, I haven't blocked it because I noticed very quickly that this was the problem. Let me put this on. I have just remembered trying it on as well, but I did the bind off too tight. <laughs> so I need to sort that as well, but that's easy to sort. Now, can we see, where is the problem? Can we see the problem? There. Okay. There's the problem. I don't know what's happened. When I look at it up close, it looks like one of my ends is come undone where I've woven an end in or where I've um, spit spliced together. And uh, I don't wear it, even though it probably would be OK, because I'm really worried that it's going to pull further. Uh, you can't really see it very much unless I point it out because of where it is. Now I can see it glaringly because I know where it is. Uh, but I can also I can feel that it's starting to unravel back up this way a little bit. This feels loose. And this is back in the yoke. So to be able to get back to there, I'd have to unravel all the body, all of both sleeves and some of the yoke. And I don't know if there's any way to fix it other than doing that. And I was honestly, I was so close to crying because look how good it looks. I can't like this is such a beautiful piece of work. It, no credit to me, entirely credit to the design because the design is stunning. I'm pleased with the colours I picked. The colours the colors really suit me. The size is good. It's got a bit of, uh, it's probably got a little bit of positive ease when I when I block it. Like I said, I've done the bind off too tight because I was being lazy and I just did a standard bind off by the time I'd got to the end. But I could fix that really easily. But that I can't fix. I don't know what to do. Help. Oh, I just want to cry again looking at it. Because look how good it looks. <sighs> Yeah, the, the bind off is definitely too tight. I'm not adding this in because this next bit's going to be ungainly. Let me take this properly off. Ah, even the floats look good. Look. <laughs> I 
there are we there so i don't I, I really don't know what's happened there I, from what i can tell looking at it there are some little ends and i think a spit splice has come undone i've had no problems with moths in anything uh and it hasn't been stored somewhere where moths would be able to access it i think and there's no other holes so I, that's all i can think is that an end has come unwoven so this is my dishonourable mention because it's my utter, utter heartbreak. It's probably the most beautiful thing I've ever knit and there's a problem. So if anybody has any suggestions on any way that I could fix that that doesn't involve ripping back, I, I won't rip back. What I'll do is I'll just knit another one at another point because it was very fun to knit. Uh, again, this is just for just for sort of finality. This is a woolly knit wool. 100% British wool kern in the shade Mallard and I think it's Signet Truly, Truly Wool Rich 4 ply in the shade it's just called Cream I don't know if this is still made anymore the Signet I used to be able to get it from Derrimores which was an online shop in the UK that went under a few years back and I just had some in stash so I used it but I would definitely do these colours again oh my poor heart okay so on that very upsetting note, those are my least worn knits for a variety of reasons. So from all of those, we've learned, <laughs> I've learned, in, and I have changed this a lot in my in my knitting practice, which is why a lot of the things that I wear the most are things that I've completed more recently. So we've learned that certain necklines I don't like. In fact, from two of them, really from the Whitmore, we've learned the same thing again. Necklines are a point of sensory problem to me, basically. <laughs> uh, we've learned to block our swatch. We've learned to try on as you go. We've learned, again, to try on as you go. Don't make things too short. Length matters. Um, and we've learned that something really upsetting happened to that while I was knitting it and I didn't notice it until the end. I'd be really interested to hear in the comments if uh, there's anything, anything like this, like, I don't know, throughout anything that you don't wear very much and why. What have you learned? From um, but the sundial and the ghost whisperer, I might be able to save. So I will let you know. I'll come back and let you know how these how that, that works out. I'm going to go put the sundial into block now, actually. And what's your least one knit? Do you still have it? Have you given it away? Have you donated it? Let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope even if you've, I hope you found it interesting. And I hope if you've been knitting whilst you've been watching, you've got a few rows in and whatever you're working on. Uh, if you enjoyed it, drop me a like uh, and a comment and feel free to subscribe. I do, I'm, I'm currently trying to do every other week, I do a podcast episode. So if you want to see what I'm working on at the moment, there will be one coming next weekend. Uh, and then every other week in between, I'm trying to do more videos like this, whether it be a pattern roundup or uh, it's just something a bit different that isn't a traditional podcast format. So if you liked what you saw, uh, and you're interested to come back for some more of that, then feel free to subscribe. It really does help. And on that note, happy knitting. And I will see you again on the next one. Bye, guys.